And we're back for part five of my video game collection re review. And this time we come to Condemned Criminal Origin. God damn it, I hate this game. I have I was I don't know how long I had it, but I still haven't finished it. Uh, I made a let's play of it. Uh, to show you why I hate it, and I think this is perhaps the game I hate the most in my collection. First off, I don't like uh, uh, what you are doing in this game. You are basically beating up hobos for entire game. I called it uh, bomb fight the game, because it's basically like you're having different kinds of uh, equipment around, and then you have to beat things to death. You get weapons, but uh, <laughs> the, the ammo is uh, scarce, uh, and you have to basically bludgeon <laughs> those people to death. And it's never, uh, it's not explained why they are attacking you, it's not explained why you can't get out of there and just stop doing it. It just feels like you constantly get new waves of angry, crazy hobos, and you have to bludgeon them. To death with a pipe or with a four, two by four or with whatever, and it goes on and on and on and on, and then you find some pigeons there, and then you get blah blah blah. And it's just goddamn awful. And and okay, there are many awful games in this world, uh, but what I've kind of really started to hate about this game is that I thought it would be so much more different. Because if you look on the behind. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it says uh, stay alive inside any you stay alive using any weapons you can can from firearms to lead pipes yes mostly lead pipes uh, unprecedented high definition graphics yes there's nothing wrong with the graphics there we go the last one line uh, the last paragraph use sophisticated forensic tools to investigate crime scenes and uncover evidence in this intense one of a kind psychological thriller uh, it, that last paragraph makes it seem like an intelligent game uh, it makes it seem like it has that you can actually do interesting things doing the interesting investigations but it, you, you just basically for 90% of what I played, you, you bludgeon uh, 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 hobos to death. And the rest, and, and those parts that are supposed to be like forensic, is just. <sighs> duck, duck, goose! But okay, I don't need to get into more details of this, I think. Because. Uh, uh, um, uh, I've done, already done a let's play of it. But. Uh, Yes, I hate this. I will give it one out of six. Or two rocks and a fist. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot this game. Bullet Storm. Uh, critic, critics say this is the game that uh, Duke Nukem Forever was supposed to be. And I agree, this game is funny, this game is action packed, this game has a lot of fun stuff and some dialogue that although quirky and campy, it still is, it worked in this game. And uh, <laughs> I had a lot of fun playing it and I asked my friends on Xbox to play this multiplayer part that has like the condensed versions if you like of the... It's sort of like a wave game where you have to kill uh, kill uh, different waves of creatures creatively and then get points for it and then you can move on to the next wave and you get enough points. I love that part of the game but unfortunately it doesn't seem like any of my Xbox Live friends wants to play it but uh, if they ever do we could make a let's play of it because I really enjoy it a lot. Uh, not as much as Bioshock 2 
but uh, I, I have all the achievements for Bioshock 2, so and this one I haven't. So well, it would have been fun to try to get some more achievements on it. I give this game four out of six. Yes, uh, it's um, it's it's a good, but it's not brilliant. It didn't blow my mind, but it, it was fun. It's one of the best first-person shooter games I played, but I don't. Uh, enjoy first-person shooters that much, to be honest with you. DOOM 3 BFG Edition uh, Bought this game late as most games I buy. Uh, it, in this cartridge you have DOOM 3 and DOOM 1 and 2. And I played them all. Uh, I didn't play. Also, Doom 3 has the expansion packs for uh, the original. Let's turn it to the back side so you can see. Uh, and also, it has 3D. I've not tried that, but it's supposed to have 3D uh, too. Like real 3D, like you're using uh, optimized in stereoscopic 3D for Xbox 360. Not try that. And also the Lost Missions and uh, another expansion to the game, so it's the entire Doom 3 game. And also the entire Doom 1 and 2 as well. And um, I've had a lot of fun playing that. Uh, it's, it's actually Doom 3 is sort of like the perfection of Doom if you ask me. If it, I'm just talking about the first campaign, the second one. I stopped playing almost immediately and uh, didn't like that one. But the first one uh, was great. It sort of felt like uh, a natural remake of the first game, as you sort of have um, better graphics, uh, better storytelling techniques for games, and all of these are used to uh, not change Doom but or the Doom world but make it anew uh, and better. I uh, really enjoyed it, uh, had a lot of funny uh, story enhancing uh, techniques uh, like uh, PDFs, you could find different audio logs and stuff that really made me feel like Doom came alive, the Doom, the problems of uh, Doom uh, or hell coming to our dimension and how it works. I really felt that this was surprisingly good. I'll give it 4 out of 6. Yes. Again, because I don't really like first person shooters. Enough of that. Duke Nukem Forever! God damn it, this game is boring. Made a let's play of it. Don't know if I actually need to do anything more. Uh, it's already out there. Why I don't like it, or I don't hate it, but it's boring, uh, and everybody seems to hate this game. So why should I add anything? It's been said over and over again. So uh, yeah, bad game. Bought it just because it was 18 years in development or something, and that made it historically significant, kind of. So um, yeah, I bought it, and I bought it late. Of course, I didn't. It took 70, say, X amount of years to make it, and so why should I just run to the store and buy it when it finally it came out? So I just waited until it was cheap as bleep, and uh, they threw it at me, and then I bought it, and now uh, and I played through the entire thing and uh, didn't buy the DLC. It's it's supposed to be better, uh, but no, I'm not a fan. Portal 2! It's not my copy, borrowed it from a friend, really enjoy it. Uh, let's give this one 5 out of 6. And uh, yeah, 5 out of 6. The main, the only drawback of this game is that I felt it was a bit too long. And I know many people enjoy long games, but uh, I have a tendency to feel that the game is dragging on. And the middle part of this game felt a little bit like that. So like it never ended. It kept on going, kept on going. And uh, But um, 
it's not like I was bored, but it's sort of like how much longer could it be? Oh, it's still going on. Okay, so it's not I was it's not like I was bored. It's just that um, so I'm not. It's just felt too long, and I like shorter games, more intense storyline. Uh, to put it like that, um, that's the single player. Multiplayer is actually even better uh, than the single player, although it is a, a joint grade here. Um, so I'm not going to give a new grade for the multiplayer. Uh, made some uh, some let's plays of that with random person. Again, very funny and. Uh, I enjoy it a lot, and also I like that it's sort of like a his own story, although not actually expanding on the universe a lot. But it's it does have its own story too. So uh, yeah, five out of six. Okay. Now, as another note is that I said that my uh, game library was in alphabetical order, and I see that I should have organized the list bit better before I starting recording but okay uh, believe me uh, at least 20% of the time this game collection is in alphabetical order Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 I really enjoyed them both uh, the some parts in this game, gameplay wise especially, is better than this. But the story I think is more interesting in this one, including the DLCs. Not bought any other DLCs for Fallout New Vegas. But the gameplay is often better in this one, but the story is better than in this one. That's how it works sometimes. Uh, same engine type, same graphics, same, uh, same feel. To it, although I think I felt this game was a little bit more alive than this one. Uh, had a lot of fun playing them. Uh, I actually thought I would not enjoy them as much because I don't like pure RPG games. I like first person shooters with RPG role playing game options so you can upgrade your character and stuff but usually it's dialogue options and inventory and uh, and um, multiple endings in quote unquote because usually it's the, the endings are really similar to each other uh, and also long plays I mean to play an RPG game or a role playing game it can take many hours and I already said I don't like long games. Uh, usually, I, if it's too long, I lose interest. Uh, especially because the story uh, in a movie, for instance, two hour movie, sort of like you get the story quick. But uh, when you play a game and it keeps going on and on and on, you kind of lose track of what the hell is going on. So, uh, but, I, but in this game, I in both of these games, I enjoyed it. And I got it, and I found it a-okay. Um, so let's give this one 5 out of 6, and this 4 out of 6. Because uh, a little bit more dead, a li little, little less interesting story, to be honest with you. Although this story is more condensed. It has more clear objective than this one. But um, still, I felt this world was more alive, and, uh, and the story was... Uh, more interesting and compelling in that one, although this one had a more clear, uh, you you get shot in the head, who shot you? <laughs> That's the story of that one, whereas this is more, your dad ran away, then for six hours of play to, uh, playing, then finally you find your dad, and uh, I'm not gonna tell anymore, but was it worth it? I <laughs> but I loved it anyway. Um, is there anything more I can tell about it? Uh, yeah, I can. I guess I can tell you why I bought them. Uh, as I said, I don't like RPG games, so Skyrim and uh, and uh, what is the other games called? Uh, whatever, <laughs> lots of them. But I, I, uh, um, Mass Effect 
and uh, Dragon Age and Dungeon and Dragon games. Uh, I have one that I bought on Steam. Baldur's Gate, there we go. And uh, Stick of Truth, although I as you, I will show you later, I really enjoy that one too, but usually I, I just don't want to play a game that never ends and that you could keep playing on and on and on in the same story. I like replay value, not game length value, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So, um, but I, as I said, these two games, uh, I play them through and really enjoy them. I play this twice, play this one also a couple of times, because you get different, uh, you can do different options. You can be a good guy or you can be a bad guy, like in most role-playing games. Um, or <laughs> at least any role-playing games with respect for itself. So, uh, yeah, but I bought them because... I saw that um, a bobblehead guy, or perhaps not bobblehead guy, but vault guy. Um, this is character design. It's not. It's a part of like the. Let's see here. It's, he's on the background. It's on the back case. Uh, this guy really gave me associations to Bio, Bio Bioshock 1 and 2 and I like that style and I also like the feel of the 90s, 50s because that's how this world works, it's sort of like a alternate universe if you want to be <laughs> if you want to be to say it like that it's like a kind of alternate universe where, 50, where their 50s as a culture and style lasted for a longer time and then a nuclear holocaust came and then you are waking up into this world that has still this 1950s um, style and feel uh, and then of course you have to do your RPG things and play it through and I wanted to play it because of that 1950s feel uh, and uh, I bought this one on, in on the internet and I bought this one in store because I was waiting for this one to come. So I bought this one while I waited for this one. And this one is, of course, Game of the Year edition, so I have all of the DLCs. Whereas this one is more vanilla. It doesn't have any of the DLCs. So, um... And I didn't buy any of them afterwards either. I don't know if they're any good. Can't comment on that. Uh, but, yes, let's give it four out of, 5 out of 6 and 4 out of 6. Orange box with lots of different games Half-Life Team Fortress and Portal and also includes Half-Life 2 and Episode 1 Yes Okay, so how should I start reviewing this one? I mean, <laughs> this is a collection of games uh, I guess I would give it 4 out of 6 total Yes but uh, individually, I have different opinions of the different games in this uh, box. Let's turn it around. Half-Life 2. I don't like it. I kind of hated it. It's. I plan on making a uh, let's play a game I hate video on it, cause I really don't like Half-Life 2. It's l way too long. It la goes on and on and on. And the basic story is you need to get to A to from A to C, but on the way from A to C there's constant problems in B. So it's sort of like, oh you have to go there, oh the uh, tunnel collapsed, oh you have to go then there, and then you have to go there, and then you have to go there, and blah blah blah. And I don't care. Why people like it, I have no idea, but it just kept going on and on and on. And... Ugh. But, interesting enough for me at least, was that I actually really enjoyed episode 2. <laughs> for some reason, or episode 1, I guess is the uh, thing here. Why? I, th I, I thought about it. Why did I enjoy Half-Life 2 Episode 1 better than the main game? And I thought the main reason is, one, it's shorter. 
and two, you have this uh, woman following you that you actually have contact with that talks to you and progresses the story a bit. So you don't, because that's the thing in Half Life 2, you are also very alone, you keep on walking from A to B and then you meet somebody and then they get killed usually and then you just keep walking on and on and on in this wasteland future thing and uh, but in the episode 2 you have this girl and you talk to her and you get yeah it feels like it's more story than or at least you understand what the hell is going on portal uh, Portal is uh, my favorite game on uh, the orange box. Uh, it um, is better, I think, than the first, second one, although the second one is longer. But I think that Portal 1 has the right length uh, and you could say that uh, it's also... Um, the original is always the best. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with that uh, uh, statement. I'm just throwing it out there. But at least that was the first one, and it had that song "Portal Still Alive." That was a fun song, um, and uh, it it didn't. It was a simple story, and sometimes the simplest is the best. Uh, you are a woman called Shell, who you know little to nothing about, and she gets a portal gun and needs to escape the lab. That's the basic story, and uh, and then you, you need to use your head. It's a puzzle game, mostly. Uh, I think that's been annoying me that uh, I, I should say is that uh, there's this movement of gamers who wants it, there, who wants to say that you can learn something from video games? And they, they, those people are probably the same people who, uh, in the next turn, says video games doesn't make anyone violent. So it's sort of like you can't have it both ways. You can't say that Portal teaches you about uh, gravity and physics uh, because of this engine, but also. You can't learn to kill people, you can't learn anything else other than what is uh, explicitly intended. And then you sort of use the, you can use the video game as a learning tool. I think that you can make a game that teaches you something, but you cannot make a game that teaches you something without being necessarily a little bit boring too. And it's not so sort of like in this game that they teach you, teach you that uh, Newton said this and that, so that means that uh, when you are throwing something this way, blah 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 blah. Uh, it, it isn't actually teaching you physics, other than you are actually using physics of that game, mind you. It's uh, uh, is is bound by the rules of the game. It's not real physics. It's the engine that decides how the gravity works and stuff like that. Um, yes, you can put out the argument that you can learn stuff from Portal, a pedagogy tool. You can learn something, I guess. But that's not what I like about this game. The reason why I like this game is that it has an interesting story uh, and interesting puzzles. So I'll give this one a 6 out of 6. Team Fortress 2 uh, is my friend's favorite game. So I played it a lot with him and, uh, and, and his friends again online. Uh, I, I think it's funny, but uh, it also, as was on the orange box, it's an afterthought on the box. So it's really short uh, uh, in content. You have four maps, I guess, and then you have a big variety of characters, but it's sort of like, it's really a small game, and, and that could be the, the opposite of what I just said, is that too long, not good, too short, can be a bit repetitive. So, I played it on the PC, and as I said on the PC, I would love to see another edition of 
Team Fortress coming out in its own game, perhaps even having a single player campaign um, story. I know it seems kind of stupid because Team Fortress is mainly a, a multiplayer game, but it would have been fun to have sort of like this crazy story with these characters and you have to like play as perhaps one or two stages with the uh, with Pyro and then one with Tank. I'm just thinking out loud here. And then of course all of those customization things so you can make your own character and make it feel like you're playing your, uh, uh, your own version of Pyro and your own version of the Medic like they can do in the PC game. But I'll give it 4 out of 6. Last one in my first person shooter ga gallery. Uh, there is a lot of simulator games and I played some of them. I played this one mainly, uh, but I did get for my birthday when I was like 10 or something. Then I got uh, Microsoft 98's flying simulator or something like that. And First off, the first question is do you actually learn anything from uh, this? Are you actually learning farming? Are you learning to fly? Are you learning to drive a truck or whatever the simulation may be? Are you learning to be a goat? Uh, probably not, to be honest with you. It just gives a simulation of it. And I guess some people would say that sim the simulation has a learning value. But at least you have to be very careful in thinking that you can apply the knowledge of the simulation in real life. <laughs> if you have a driving simulator, I don't think you should go uh, 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 taking a driving test just after playing it for a couple of hours, that's all I'm saying. Uh, so, I think many for a simulator games are mainly cause of special interest or for fun. And I bought this, I made a let's play of it too. Uh, I, I bought it as a joke for myself, a joke present to myself. Not very funny to play, except when you're just thinking that what you're playing is so boring it gets funny. Kinda like my videos. Uh, <laughs> I am... Um, I the, But the joke wore thin after like an hour or something and I... Yeah, I, I would guess the same thing would go for Goat Simulator, which is more of an obvious joke than Farming Simulator and uh, many of the other simulators. Uh, it's more obvious in Goat Simulator, but uh, it, I think it's the same reason people play it. It's mostly for fun, but I guess you could find people who actually buy Farming Simulator to feel like a farmer, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I just found it funny for a while, but... Not anymore, so I guess I will give it 3 out of 6, because it has a lot of details, but it's uh, not very entertaining. Next time, we'll do my V-Games.